Bismillah. Go ahead. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi israh li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul ibadatan mi lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome everyone to our specific program 2, 2019 Hajj webinar. Uh, the agenda for today, inshallah, uh, we will be introducing our team leaders, sharing some office management updates, as well as uh, general information and expectations. Uh, before we officially start with our sessions, we can open, inshallah, by listening to Quranic recitation uh, with one of our Imam, Qari Abdul Basit. Imam Qari Abdul Basit, you can start, inshallah, by unmuting yourself. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيه الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتقوا ليا ليس عليكم جناح أن تبتغوا فضلا من ربكم فإذا أفضتم من عرفات فاذكروا الله فاذكروا الله عند المشعر الحرام واذكروه كما هداكم وإن كنتم من قبله لمن الضالين ثم أفيضوا من حيث أفاض واستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم فإذا قضيتم مناسككم فاذكروا الله كذكركم آباءكم أو أشد ذكرا فمن الناس من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا وما له في الآخرة من خلاق ومنهم من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين ما شاء الله uh, wonderful recitations uh, thank you everyone again for joining on behalf of Dar es Salaam team I want to thank you uh, for your trust and also the opportunity of serving you we want to assure you that we will inshallah make our commitment and do our very best for the successful of the, uh, the upcoming journey is all together. Uh, we hope that you will meet your expectations make, and make your, your Hajj journey as easily as possible. We pray, we pray, inshallah, your Hajj and Umrah are not only accepted, but inshallah also blessed with, with Hajj Mabrur. Uh, after a long process, we are very excited to finally see things uh, fall into places and happy 
to have this opportunity to finally have a direct communication with all of you. Uh, this is inshallah we're the beginning of our journey. Alhamdulillah, we have about a month to go before our trip. Uh, my humble suggestion is to please take advantage of it. Uh, your participation on, in this is very important. Uh, please make sure to review information that we have shared uh, and continue checking your email uh, frequently. If you have not yet visited our uh, uh, HUD 2019 forum, please do so. And of course, uh, don't hesitate to contact us with any questions uh, or any concern you might have. Before we start, uh, just to remind you, should you have any questions, please hold and wait until the end. Most likely your question will be discussed and answered during the session. If not, of course, uh, you can post them and inshallah we will respond accordingly in the session at the end. I will start briefly by introducing myself as your program manager, Alhamdulillah. Allah has blessed me with helping in organizing and uh, managing Hajj and Umrah in 2004. I have been working and supporting in many levels of services here in the U.S. as well as also, Alhamdulillah, I have been going since. This is truly a blessing. Uh, I don't take this for granted. May Allah, inshallah, continue using us, make it easy, and looking forward to meeting you all, inshallah, very soon. Uh, before we continue with our agenda, I also want to mention that we are, we are just the front faces of Dar es Salaam team. There are hundreds more working behind the scene and supporting the program according to their expertise. Some to mention are the office management team that have been working very hard since the beginning of this, this year. Also, we have a special team uh, for the airport staff, uh, for the passport, a team for transportation, uh, special teams for luggage hotel and restaurant managers. We also have special team for the Manasik of Hajj, uh, concentrating on the Mina, Arafat, and Musdalifa logistics and many, many more. Uh, the reason for me mentioning the above is to assure you that inshallah, you are, not, you are in a good hand. Our main goal, it is very, very important that, uh, for, uh, for you to inshallah enjoy your spirituals and not to worry about uh, minor detail and many of the logistics. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure I can also speak on behalf of the rest of our team. We really appreciate the trust and the opportunity of serving you. And we will do our very best to, inshallah, make sure things are going as smoothly as possible. My humble request again is for you to take the time to review all the program information and communicate with us any question or concern you might have. The more we communicate and address your questions and concern, inshallah, the earlier the better. Uh, I'm happy to share my, my cell. Uh, and please feel free to contact me any time if you're convenient. Now, uh, following up on our agenda, we will have a short inspiration talk by one of our imams. With that said, uh, inshallah, Sheikh Abdul Hamid, uh, whenever you're ready, you can also take, uh, take this opportunity uh, to introduce yourself. Sheikh Abdul Hamid. Is he available? Brother Azar or Mother Manjil, do you know if he's available? I called, but I got a voicemail, so I left a, voice, a message for him. So I'm not sure. I'll try to call him again. I know okay. he was traveling to the to the East Coast, Atlantic Coast, and uh, we had a conversation that he would be uh, his time would be different, but he said he would attend from there. Um, um, I'm assuming that uh, if he had not done so, he would have sent a message. He hasn't. So why don't you move ahead and... Okay, I guess. Okay, inshallah, if he's back later on, we can uh, go back to it. Uh, we will move, move on, inshallah, uh, with one of our management teams uh, that I'm sure all of you have been in, in contact with, Brother Manzil. Inshallah, if you can start by introducing yourself and also share some of our uh, internal management and process updates. So, Bismillah, Man Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rahim, Salatu wa Salam, Allah, Rasulillah. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, let me welcome everyone on the call and again congratulate you in making this decision to perform Hajj this year, Allah. 
and to thank you for giving Dar es Salaam the opportunity to assist you in this endeavor. Uh, as uh, Brother Haider indicated, my name is Benzil. I'm one of the two operations managers part of, either 2A, 2B, or 2C. The operations manager is Azhar Zaidi, who will address you later. Uh, um, for each program, there is a program manager, manager um, operations managers, and um, I just want to make sure that you understand that we are responsible for the implementation of the program as outlined in your itinerary. But let me be extremely clear on something before I proceed. We, the managers, the program manager, the operations manager, your group leaders and imams, are all collectively responsible for your safety, comfort, and to ensure that you're fully informed of all the physical, spiritual, and religious aspects of this journey. We will do our part, our utmost best, to ensure that you have the requisite skills and knowledge and frame of mind to perform Hajj in a way that was taught to us by the Prophet and we pray that Allah makes this Hajj acceptable to us, inshallah, acceptable to Him, inshallah. As uh, Brother Haider mentioned, I'm part of working with all of you. Many of you would have received emails from me, calls from me. And so I just want to update you on a few items that are important to you right now. We have 742 Hujaj in the group. 742 in the program two. We have 16 groups, one through 16. Now, there are a few things that are of importance to most of you, and I'm sure um, you're aware of this, and that's the visas. We have been in the process of preparing your passports and sending and getting your visa and, and communicating with the, with the Saudi embassy. And so far, we have approximately four, 500 visas approved. And we'll be, pre be, we'll be pre preparing to send them out, inshallah, to you. The balance should be completed by next week, inshallah. So you should have your first pack, which includes among passport, your, your electronic visa, your ID cards, and your, and your, um, and your luggage earlier than expected, alhamdulillah. So um, that's, that's some good news, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Second uh, important part of your journey at this point in time is the airlines. I know many of you have confirmed airline tickets through now. The airline department is working diligently to make sure that everybody's got their confirmed Hajj flight tickets. And so um, we just probably have a, a maybe about a 20 or so left to be confirmed. You can also find all of this information in the status of updates that we actually sent you. And you can find about your payments. You can find about documentation. You can find about your airline reservations all from that link that we've sent you so that you're able to, to go on that link. They will send you an email with all the information, all your personal information. As uh, alluded to earlier, the knowledge and information, and, and, and I think Brother Azar is gonna, gonna stress this more. Um, you should all be part of the forum, inshallah. Now, I don't want to take too much of your time, but let me, let me just conclude by mentioning one thing here. Hajj is an ibadah, so you will be tested. In the last six months, I've received one to many emails, phone calls, texts, and WhatsApp messages. I know that we are all excited about our upcoming trip and trying to ensure that things are done in a timely manner. But let me remind myself first, and then you. This trip 
is all about patience and sacrifice. We all need to be cognizant. Remember, you will be tested in many ways. What is the reward of an accepted hatch? Being able to return home as a newborn baby, sinless. Don't you think Shaitan will be doing his utmost best to distract you from completing this ibadah? So all I'm asking for you and myself is that we should look out for these tests, be prepared for them, and try to exercise as much, much patience as possible to deal with it, inshallah. I look forward to meeting all of you in Medina, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah al khair for sharing some of the update information. It was very helpful and hope uh, it answered some of uh, your questions and concerns. Again, inshallah, uh, anytime that you have a follow up, you can always call any one of us. Inshallah, we'll be there and answer some of the questions. Before we move on into the last item on our agenda and follow up with question and answer, we will continue first with the rest of our team introductions. This, inshallah, will be an order by our group number uh, for program 2A. It starts with program, uh, group number one, which is Sheikh Abdul Hamid. Uh, I, I'm not sure if he's available or not yet, but if he does, inshallah, later on, we can connect him back. Uh, group number two is Imam Kari Abdul Basin. He was also the one who, mashallah, with a beautiful voice reciting the Quran earlier. Uh, please, uh, uh, Imam Kari Abdul Basit, you can unmute yourself and introduce yourself, inshallah. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected shiuch, uh, respected brothers and sisters in Islam, this is uh, your brother Kari Abdul Basit. Uh, currently, I'm Imam of New Brunswick Islamic Center, New Jersey. Prior to that, I was uh, assistant, assistant Imam of King Faisal Masjid Islamabad. Uh, from 1992 to 2000, then I moved to United States. Alhamdulillah, I graduated from International Islamic University, Islamabad, from the Department of Islamic Studies. Then I got uh, Master's in Arabic from Qaid Azam University. Alhamdulillah. I memorized Quran when I was nine years old. Since that, Alhamdulillah, I'm reading uh, Tarabi in every year. This is Bifadlillahi wa bi karami. Uh, also, Alhamdulillah, I joined uh, Dar es Salaam in 2005 to serve the Duyuf al Rahman. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who give us the opportunity every year to serve the Hujjat. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept uh, this from me. And uh, Give me a tawfiq to serve this year also. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next, inshallah, will be uh, group number three, uh, Dr. Sabir Sayyid. I'm not sure if he's available. I think he has a live conference there in Houston. Maybe he's participating or participating on that. Uh, group number four is Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman Ahmed. You can unmute yourself and in, uh, introduce yourself, just please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, my name is Abdurrahman Ahmed. I've been an imam for about 11 years and currently serving in uh, Massachusetts, the Islamic Center of New England in Sharon. And uh, I've been leading uh, Hajj and Umrah group since 2014 and joined Darussalam in 2016. And uh, this will be, inshallah, my third trip. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of you. And I'm very, th very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, that he has accepted me and all of you. And also thankful to Dar Salaam and the leadership. And uh, last but not least, our guest, the judge, who are going to join us, inshallah. It's my honor and privilege that I will be uh, at your service in any ways, inshallah. And I look forward to seeing all of you in Medina Manawar. Barakallahu alaykum. Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, next on the line is uh, group number five, uh, Brother Is Isam Abdullah, inshallah. Yes. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, my name is Isam Abdullah, your brother group number five. I have been leading, alhamdulillah, the Hajj groups for many years. Uh, subhanallah, each year I find it uh, to be an exciting and emotional and humbling experience. It's an honor to serve you uh, and make your blessed journey, inshallah, as worry free and the comfortable as possible, subhanAllah, so that you can uh, focus on your ibadah. May Allah accept, inshallah, your hajj, uh, inshallah, and I look forward to serve all of you and meeting all of you, inshallah, very soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Also on group number five is our brother Marvin Ghani, but I think he's not available for the moment. Uh, we move on into uh, group number six. And this is the last, inshallah, in program 2A, uh, Muhammad, uh, brother Muhammad Jamil Osman. I think he's also not available at this moment. Uh, we can move on, inshallah, with program 2B, uh, group number seven, uh, Imam Muhammad Sibli. You can unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please. Imam Hamas Sibley. Imam Sibley. Brother Haider, Brother uh, Shabir Sayyid want to speak. I think he is texting me. Okay, uh, uh, while waiting for him, we can go back, inshallah, with uh, Dr. Sabir Sayyid. He is from 2A, group number three. Dr. Sabir Sayyid, uh, the line is yours. Is he here? I guess uh, we can go back to it, inshallah. Uh, for, for program 2B, uh, group number eight, Sheikh Jamil, inshallah. Brother Haider. Brother, ha Brother Haider. Yes, Imam Sibley. Imam Jamal, you can start and we can go back inside to Imam Sibley later on. I am here, I am here, Brother Haider. Uh, Imam Sibley, go ahead if you are there, if you, if you are available. Yeah, I am available. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Imam Hamad Ahmed Shibli from the Islamic Society of Central Jersey since 1983-86. I have been the Imam in New Orleans for another four years. Before that, my, since 1982 to 1984, 86, I'm sorry. Then I graduated from al University before I came to the United States and was an Imam in Lebanon in Abu Bakr Masjid Siddiq for many years, alhamdulillah. Then when I got to know Hajj Mustafa and Dar es Salaam since 1987, I have been serving the Hajjaj, alhamdulillah, under the leadership of Hajj Mustafa and other groups. And today we come to the year 2019. Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy to serve the Hujjaj as an Imam in program two, as my brother and sister in group seven. I am very happy to be with you. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, we'll see you in Medina. My wife, Mona Sibli, she will be with the sister, with other uh, three sisters. And please pray for us, we pray for you. And may Allah make our Hajj and your Hajj Hajj Madrur, Wasai Mashkur, Wasan Makhpur, Amin Ya Rabbi Alameen. Thank you, Brother Azhar and Brother Haider. Sorry for this interruption. And may Allah be with you. Jazakallah uh, Khair. I guess we can move on with uh, Imam Jamal with uh, group number eight. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is uh, Jamal bin Amr. I'm been, alhamdulillah, I'm Imam at uh, the Islamic uh, Al-Aman Center, Imam Al-Khatib, uh, and uh, I've been serving the community, mashallah, for four years, and Imam for almost uh, 19 years, alhamdulillah. Uh, as a study, alhamdulillah, I did uh, many studies, but uh, the most important to help uh, in this field, alhamdulillah, as I have a PhD in Islamic studies, alhamdulillah. Uh, I've been with Dar Salaam, uh, this is my seventh year. Uh, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to be granted and to be also among a team. They are very dedicated and, and devoted, alhamdulillah, 
and uh, I believe uh, Dar es Salaam has, you know, that uh, standard to, to really serve the Hujjah, to help them, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala, fulfill uh, a lifetime experience, really a lifetime experience. And I will say the two main points that I've been, uh, alhamdulillah, experienced with Dar es Salaam uh, is first uh, the, the high standard of the management and the organization. And that's it's really a blessing uh, to serve, insha'Allah, the Hujjahs in the best of their ability. And the second one that I'm being blessed uh, to have, insha'Allah, with the team of the Dar es Salaam, that they are very dedicated. Uh, and uh, and very devoted, alhamdulillah. And I think this is the treasure of the Dar es Salaam. Uh, I believe also uh, that uh, serving the Hujjaj is not only uh, customer service, arohl. it is really as a worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, beside the fact that someone will be fulfilling his Hajj, insha'Allah ta'ala, and that's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is also uh, to, to serve the Hujjaj and serving the Hujjaj is a worship. It is truly worship as it is an amana uh, and the trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, uh, as a team and one of the team will be accountable of Allah and from before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this trust and the amana. Uh, and our amana, inshallah, is to try to help you find the focus, try to help you to guide you, inshallah ta'ala, to fulfill a hajj that is mabrur, accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, our task, inshallah, to try to have that peace of mind because that's actually those who will be guiding and helping in the hajj is to make that place to be amin, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made it to be a sanctity of peace. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all uh, as a team to serve the hujjaj and to have you be idhnillahi ta'ala uh, helping you and guiding you to fulfill a great hajj. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and bless us and be shown as the gift, insha'Allah, to be on Arafah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Arafah to be the best day in your life, insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah accept our hajj. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us with the accepted hajj the greatest of the reward, his pleasure, and the jannah, insha'Allah. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu fiqh. Ameen, ameen. Jazakallahu khair. Uh, next, inshallah, in program 2B, group number 9, is Brother Nasir Mahmoud. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, my name is Nasir Mahmoud. I am in travel business last about 40 years. I am working for Dar es Salaam last 20 plus years, uh, supporting Dar es Salaam with Hajj and Umrah. And uh, I did not find any company in North America, Canada, as good as like Dar es Salaam. So we will make sure, inshallah, that you will, whatever expectations you have with Dar es Salaam, we will try to fulfill all those expectations, inshallah. Uh, we also think it's in our mind, we keep in mind that uh, you, beside Dar es Salaam, you are a guest of Allah. So if anything we do intentionally or some unintentionally, we, we will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make sure that uh, we accommodate all your requirements and please brothers and sisters, if there is anything you feel anything please be open and uh, come forward and bring us to our knowledge because sometimes uh, we are human and anybody can make mistake but if there is something please come forward and uh, bring to our knowledge and we will try to fix it inshallah as soon as possible and uh, so far last past 20 plus years in my group Alhamdulillah, I did not have a single complaint. And uh, I, inshallah, I'm hoping Allah will support us, Allah will help us, and you will have a wonderful experience with us, with Dar es Salaam, and you will have a wonderful Hajj, inshallah, 2019. Jazakallah khair, my name is Nasir Mahmood, and uh, you will have my contact, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, 
brother Haider and brother Azar. Thank you. Uh, inshallah. And the next one, inshallah, and group, uh, to be group number 10 is Brother Nabi, Nadim Sayyid. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nadim Sayyid. I am based in Toronto, Canada, and I have been blessed, alhamdulillah, since 2012 to be able to serve the Hajjaj. And I want to express my gratitude and humility to Allah and to Dar Islam for having the confidence in all the group leaders to be able to lead the Hujjaj. And I look forward to working with the operations manager and the program managers, as well as all the group uh, leaders in order to make this as smooth and seamless a journey as possible. I know a lot of people have a lot of uh, anxiety and a little bit uh, nervous for the first time being in Saudi Arabia, but we are all in this as a team. And inshallah, Allah will bless us and enable us to carry on our duties uh, with everyone's help, and this will be a very successful experience, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The last one, inshallah, on program 2B uh, is group number 11, Sheikh Ahsan Ansari. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ahsan Ansari, and I am one of the imams and group leaders of this program. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me that I have graduated from the Islamic University of Medina. And I'm working as a teacher and imam with some of the mosques in Toronto. Alhamdulillah, I have been serving the Hujjaj with Dar as Salaam uh, since about 2010. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all during this journey. Uh, with the little time I have, I just want to focus on, you know, just two or three points, inshallah. Uh, number one, is that we should have our intentions and our hearts in the right place. Not only is the physical and logistical preparation that is important, but also the spiritual aspect and spiritual preparation of ourselves. Alhamdulillah, we have a month that is ahead of us. And this time we should take uh, to make dua to Allah, number one, to make us sincere. Sincerity is very important. And sincerity basically to make it simple, is that we are doing this hajj only for Allah and, not for, and nothing else. And number two is make as much as istighfar as we can, right? Because the more we can say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, and the more we can remember our sins that we have committed and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, the better that is. And number three, uh, that we should read as much as we can watch videos of course that are authentic videos of how we can perform the hajj and basically familiarize ourselves with the uh, the preparation of hajj of how it should be done and of course alhamdulillah dar salam has provided much material information and the forms to learn that i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and i myself and my colleagues all of us are here to serve you jazakallahu khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We start inshallah with program 2C now, uh, group number 12, uh, Imam Muhammad Sibli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi. My greeting, my salam for all shiuch or uh, group leader or brother and all hujjaj. I don't know, is the hujjaj with us now on the online? Yes, of course. MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum, Hajjaj, Baytullah, Al Haram, to you for Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I start by Dua Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim, Abu Al Anbiya, Wa the Arfa'u Ibrahim, Al Kawaida, Min Al Bayti, Wa Ismail, Rabbana Takabal Minna, Innaka and the Sami Al Alim, Rabbana Takabal Minna, Innaka and the Sami Al Alim. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami' al-alim. Alhamdulillah, my dear respected brothers, I'm Akhukum Muhammad Shibli Khadim al-Hujjaj, insha'Allah. Since 2004, I am as Khadim al-Hujjaj with Dar Salaam. This ni'mah min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really I want to ask to make shukr to Allah and another shukr to Hajj Mustafa who gave me this opportunity. And also I will make shukr for all the hajjaj, for all the brothers who work together to give the best khutmah for hajjaj Baytullah al-Haram. 
now my job as as chaplain in the prison with uh, New Jersey State. Also, I am imam in uh, at Dawa Center in Columbus. I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give us chance this year to be together in Mecca, in Medina, in Arafat, and we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to accept our Hajj. Last thing I want to say to the Hajjaj and to myself, please make sincere tawbah before you go to Hajj. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, tawbu ila Allah tawbatan nasuha. One tawbah to Allah, one tawbah to your brothers, sister, neighbor, all the human being before you go to Hajj, ask them to forgive you then when you be in Arafat, Allah will accept your dua and your hajj, inshallah. See you, inshallah, very soon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, next on program 2C, uh, group number 13, Sheikh Usama Hassan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Usama Hassan. I'm an imam of Victoria Islamic Center. I've been an imam from the last 19 years, graduated from the university. Alhamdulillah that Allah had blessed us with this technology. We get to be, see, get to see each other, familiar with each other before even we get to meet in the Hajj, inshallah. And we cannot forget the blessing that Allah had chosen us to be able to join the genie of the Hajj this year from 1.7 billion. Alhamdulillah, this is a blessing from Allah, we cannot thank Allah enough. And we ask Allah to make us a reason for you to make the Hajj trip smooth and easy, inshallah, and be with you with any question. And uh, again, may Allah reward Darus Salam and the staff and everybody working hard to make this journey easy for everyone. And may Allah accept from us all. Jazakumullah khair. Waikumullah. Uh, next, inshallah, from program 2C, group number 14, which is Imam Ali Rabi. Uh, I think he's not available at the moment. We can move into group number 15, Brother Mustafa Ali. Uh, my name is Mustafa Ali. I am uh, resided down here in uh, Washington, D.C. area. This will be, inshallah, my uh, eighth Hajj with Dar Salaam. And it is a privilege and I'm honored to serve our judge. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Dar Salaam for giving the opportunity. If you have any question and concerns, please feel free to reach out to us individually to group leaders or your program managers. So as I would highly recommend you all to log into the Darus Salaam forum. It actually very helpful. I still log in almost every day just to see what are the questions there and some of the answers I still learn myself as well. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. See you all soon, inshallah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, the last one, inshallah, on program 2C, group number 16, is Brother Yasir Al Sabah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Yasir Al Sabah. I joined Dar es Salaam Travel on 2006 as a manager for uh, as a manager for Canada office, and it's a privilege for me to serve the Hajis every year with Dar es Salaam since that time. Yeah, I see that uh, Dr. Sabir Sayed is back uh, on the screen. If you are available and you can introduce yourself, inshallah, he's from program 2A, group number three. Uh, you have to unmute yourself, I cannot hear you. Uh, I cannot hear you. Inshallah, we move on. Uh, we, with inshallah, we try to go back again with you, inshallah. Uh, I guess, in, alhamdulillah, jakallah khair for all and the introductions. Uh, we miss some of uh, our, team our, our team leader, inshallah. Uh, we try to get connected, inshallah, in the future. But inshallah, we are looking forward uh, to meeting all of you very soon. I'm very pleased uh, now to hand uh, the rest of our session to our operation manager. Uh, he will be, inshallah, going over our specific program to general information and expectations. Brother Razar, it is the honor to have you, inshallah. Uh, please, you can take it from here. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, as each one of the members of the team that 
are going to serve you uh, for Hajj have mentioned in their own way as to how honored they are that they have been given the opportunity to serve you and to be able to handle almost all the issues you give to them to the best of their ability. What I would like to say is that this team entirely that you see is there and they want to sincerely serve you to the best of their ability. And nobody is going to take any shortcuts. Um, when we run into issues, as you do, because Hajj is a complex operation with too many moving parts, we'll make sure that you are also kept in the loop as far as communication or changes that occur. But my suggestion to you is, I think it was mentioned by, uh, it was mentioned by Hassan Ansari. Uh, somebody needs to go to mute here. Um, that you know, each one of you have to determine what this journey means to them. I have been conducting seminars um, and I've just come from a seminar in Houston back to my hotel room. And this has been my pivotal message. And that is you go back and resolve within yourself as to the purpose of this trip. Sheikh Hassan Ansari mentioned it. Remember, you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What that means is that when you look at the material that we give you, the Hajj forum, the ebook, the webinars, the seminars you attend, the book you're going to get with the final package, the book of du'as, the book of the monastic of hajj, all of that is there to help you, but you need to take the time. And I mean this seriously. You need me to take the time, not closer to flight time, but take the time <clears throat> starting today onwards to be able to have some introspection because this is the journey of the heart. No amount of preparation that we give you will be sufficient unless you actually understand it actually absorb it and personalize it as to what this means to you as far as the trip is concerned. Why are you going for Hajj? What do you expect out of it? Exactly what is required of you when you're there and how do you actually attain that? Um, it is a phenomenal opportunity for you to be able to undertake this journey. We have rites and rituals in Islam. We have the pillars of Islam. For example, Salah, we have the Siam. Uh, that repeat, you pray five times a day, you fast once a year, you pray every Jummah, but there's one thing that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do only once in your lifetime, just once, and that is Hajj. Considering the significance of that, you need to actually prepare yourself. I know we're dif it's difficult, we're busy, we're working, but for you to maximize your spiritual attainment, take this from me. I've been doing this for 28 years to maximize your spiritual attainment, you need to internalize this thing. What does it mean to you when you're actually standing in the haram, in the haram, and you're going to start your tawaf? How can you actually improve that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why is it that nothing has been prescribed as to the dua you make? It's because it's left to you by the most gracious as a blank check to ask him, but you must ask from your heart and you can ask in any language. Visualize these things, visualize the meaning behind it, in, in besides learning the rites and rituals from the, the shiuchs that we've had in the seminars and the ones that are gonna be traveling with us. You will not be left without guidance, both from a logistics perspective and from a religious perspective. What we can offer you are some hints and tips that'll make things easier for you. Uh, for example, uh, for, especially for those who have not attended the seminar, First and foremost, we've talked about the Hajj Forum. It's an online repository, and you should join the Hajj Forum. The Hajj Forum contains recording of the webinars. This webinar is being recorded. Its recording will be in the Hajj Forum under program two. The recording of the seminars held in New Jersey, the recording and the slides presented by Dr. Muslim and Siddiqui for the seminar on the fiqh and monastic of Hajj that was held in California. So take advantage of the material available but what you have to do is take the time to go through it. So first thing, make sure you join the Hajj Forum and make sure you take the time to go through the forum every so often to look at what is, what is new. <clears throat> Second thing <clears throat> I'd like to point out from a, from a logistics perspective, and that is <clears throat> that every single person this year is getting an e-visa. 
It's not a visa stamped on your passport. It's, an, it's a piece of paper. It's an electronic visa that will be attached to your passport. There'll be no stamping of the passport, no sticker on the passport page, but just a page of printed visa. It is important that you do not detach that from your passport. It is important that you take that with you because they will ask for it at the airport because that is how they will allow you to check in if you have a valid reason to go to Saudi Arabia. You must have that with you, number one. Number two is um, people who don't know whether they need wheelchair or don't need wheelchair. And this is very important. They need to understand if they have some health concerns and issues, we're offering all kinds of options for you to have an attendant uh, with a wheelchair. Of course, it's going to cost you money because that attendant is going to be there in Mina and going to push you to Arafat, to Muzdalafa and to back. And it's not simply the labor charges that we're paying for him. We're paying him for the charges for staying in Mina camp, in Arafat camp, riding the train. It's the Mutawif's fees. It's going to be all there. But if that's what it takes for you to actually travel through the monastic of Hajj, you should make that known now. If you go over there, knowing you have these health concerns, knowing the difficulty of going from Mina to Arafat to Muzdalifa and back, and then decide at that time, I need someone to help me, it may be too late. Um, you have seen all of our group leaders introduce themselves, and you have heard me say in the seminars that the ratio of a group leader uh, to a group is one person responsible for approximately 45 to 49 people. One person responsible for what it takes for people to sit in the bus. That person cannot be dedicated to pushing somebody in a wheelchair when he has responsibility for all the others. So take a look. If you have an option to get a wheelchair just for Tawaf and Sa'i, that is not the issue. I'm not referring to the wheelchair required at the airport. I'm not referring to the wheelchair that's required just to do the actual Tawaf and Sa'i. I'm referring to the wheelchair that is required for someone to push in going from Mina to Arafat during the Manasik and back from Arafat. That is something that cannot be arranged over there. And if you need some help, if you have a family member, well and good. And if you have to get someone that Dar es Salaam needs to hire, you need to tell us that now. A survey was sent out asking for those options so that we can make those arrangements. We will not be able to bring somebody else extra into Mina at that late stage. It's important for you. So that's wheelchair. Number two, people have asked me about stool. Yeah, I need stool to pray. And is there something available in the haram to pray? Haram does have stool. They have stool for you to use during your actual salah and you can put it back. But that's not the stool you need to have. You need to have a stool for yourself. And you cannot take the one from the haram. It's not meant for anybody to walk away with. That would be stealing. So you need to have your own stool if you cannot stand long. If you need stool to pray, because during the manasik, during the walk, during the waiting for the, uh, uh, the train uh, to get to the platform, the lineup at the station, you will need that stool. And so I'm answering that question that is being asked of me frequently. You don't need to purchase one from here, but if you're one of those that requires stool because of manasik, ask your group leader. We will be more than happy to guide you. Buy one from Medina. When you land in Medina, you have three nights over there. <clears throat> the third thing, that I would like you to ask, um, people ask questions about phones. We're all leaning towards that you get yourself a North American phone, the phone that you currently use with your number already on it and see if your mobile carrier will give you a global plan, a global voice and data plan. Relying on a Saudi SIM is not all that easy. We can probably procure one for you, but if you're thinking that that's gonna help you save money, that is not true because a Saudi SIM maybe complimentary from Dar es Salaam, it'll come with very limited uh, preloaded voice credit and very limited preloaded data credit. And if your intention is to use it for WhatsApp messaging or for using it for calls, chances are you'll end up buying more credits. It'll cost you anywhere between 20 US dollars to 40 US dollars by the time you're done with using the phone for voice and data over there. And now these days you have carriers in North America that offer plan that might be at least maybe 10 or $15 more. So you can remove that headache and actually have that phone uh, a plan from the carrier 
and take your North American phone with you. You must take a phone with WhatsApp messages because two weeks prior to departure, if you're in group 13 with Sheikh Osama, or if you're in group five with uh, Issam Abdullah, or group seven and Imam Ahmed, Ahmed Shibli, each group members will receive an invitation to join the group on WhatsApp. So group four with Sheikh Abdul Rahman will receive, you, you will receive an invitation to join and in that group will be the members of that group only, group leader, program manager, and operation manager. This is what we're going to use to communicate while we are in that sacred journey in Medina, Mecca, Mina, and Arafat. This requires you to have a global data plan because data will be consumed. Don't think that you can use free Wi-Fi over there to actually uh, communicate because Wi-Fi is not available when you are in the monastic of Hajj for five days. And the signals for Wi-Fi in Azizia is very weak. I mean, it's, it's almost non-existent even though we have a router connected for Wi-Fi. So you're better off when it comes to communication, especially if you're worried about it, to get something done here and that would be better. And, and, and an email will be coming out shortly, hopefully within a week's time telling you what the options are and what we're recommending that you do. But as I said, if you want us to get you a phone, a, a SIM chip, a Saudi SIM chip, we'll likely get it for you. But remember, to activate that Saudi SIM chip, to activate it, you will need to line up with the mobile carrier and you need to provide a copy of your passport and you have to provide your fingerprints and that's when you will get the chip activated. Only then you will know what the number is and, and then you can communicate that number to your family members. I should also tell you that the WhatsApp based calling, WhatsApp based calling from Saudi Arabia to North America is not permitted. Saudi Arabia does not allow any WhatsApp based voice call, phone calls. You can use WhatsApp for messaging, whether they're text message, audio message, or video message, but you cannot make phone calls as such. So knowing that, and if you think you need, or your family here needs someone in from here to contact you, it's better to actually resolve that. So an email should be coming out to everybody and then you can make those decisions accordingly. And if you have questions or concerns, we'll open up a thread on the forum and we'll be able to respond to them inshallah. Um, the other element that, that I want to bring up is power bank. I've mentioned in my, in my seminars that we should carry a power bank, a power bank uh, to charge your phone during the monastic. So have it charged as you go into Mina and you will need it for the next five days a 20,000 milliamp power bank will cost you 30 to 35 bucks and will be keeping your phone charged, your devices charged, with three full charges during the monastic of Hajj. The reason I mention that is because the electrical outlets in Mina and Arafat are limited in Muzdalifa is non-existent. And even though I have an electrical outlet, I'm putting a, a plug in there and getting an extension cord uh, for having an additional outlet is not permissible. Sometimes the fire department will tell you, you cannot put an electrical extension with multiple outlets because that's a fire hazard. In which case, you know, you're looking at 20 people, 40 people going after two outlets. And so, and your phone is draining. It's best for you to actually have your phone charged and it's better for you to have a power bank. You can always use that power bank back home as well. Um, I think I've covered that. I just wanna go through briefly the itinerary. Program two, your, your, your actual itinerary begins in Medina and it begins, um, it begins um, on August the 5th. In other words, on that day, on August the 5th is when your accommodation begins. So if you're a Canadian, you might be traveling on August the 3rd because it takes a while to get there. If you're from the United States, you might be traveling on August the 4th. But August the 5th also happens to be the last day to enter uh, Medina or Mecca for the purpose of Hajj for those carrying Hajj visas. So August the 5th is when you land. Brothers and sisters, I've covered this in the seminars and I'm going to repeat this here for your benefit so that you don't get upset and, and lose your Hajj. That is that the rooms in Medina and Mecca are not sold per night. They are sold as a block. I have to buy a one to four Zulhijjah and I have to buy a four to eight Zilijah. Whether I choose one night to stay or I choose the entire duration, that's none of their concern. It's sold as one single line item for those block, complete block. So what that has done is that for us to join 
or go in on August the 5th, fourth of Zulhijjah, which means those who have the hotel room from one to four have to first empty. So the check-in time is 4 p.m. and it takes a bit longer. And the check-in time has nothing to do with the flight's arrival time. Even in North America, if I walk into a hotel room that I had reserved, whether it's a Hampton or, or a Marriott, and I go in there at 10 o'clock in the morning, it's a light to check in. Chances are, if they don't have a room, they'll tell you, I'm sorry, sir, the check-in time is in the afternoon. It already happened to me when I, was, when I completed the seminar from New Jersey and I actually drove to Virginia. I arrived there before 10 and they, they, told, they turned me down. Over there with the hotel at capacity, I guarantee you they'll turn you down. The check-in time is after 4 p.m. What that means is that when you're arriving at, at 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, don't get upset. We will do our best to get you the room as soon as possible, but there might be a wait there. Regardless of the fact that you have traveled for 25 hours plus, the fact is the rooms are not available until after 4 p.m. in Medina. This is, again, a reminder, not because we're doing this on purpose to you. This is the way the system works, and we have to reset our expectation uh, based on the system works. Our Mazarat is on the morning of the 6th of August at 6 a.m., meaning after Fajr, we'll go for Ziyara and we'll come back and have breakfast. All of this is detailed in an ebook. If you don't know what an ebook is, really it's a PDF document, consists about 35, 37 pages, and has two parts in it. One part is general information general information about money exchange, about laundry services, etc. The other part is specific to the program. Program two's ebook contains day by day all the events that we have planned. So when I say we're going for Ziara on August the 6th at 6 a.m., as stated in the ebook, it's not simply a plan. The entire logistics behind the 16 or 17 buses that will arrive and move into Pick Hotel and depart is all part of that. The team that supports the transportation is part of that. So read the ebook. Very important for you to read the ebook, or you can actually download it to your mobile device rather than printing the copy and take that with you. And we're going to follow that ebook. And when there are changes, we'll communicate that using your WhatsApp group. And if there are any, and I will remind you from time to time. That is the plan. The benefit of the ebook is that we're sharing with you all that we've planned when you're leaving for Ziara, when exactly your luggage will be collected for so we can transfer the heavy check luggage into Azizia. All that does to you is that you do your part in providing us what we need so that we can, we can efficiently carry out the logistics and the, and the, uh, uh, of, 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 the, of the trip that makes it easy for you. But at the same time, it tells you what are your free times. So when there's nothing written in the book as, as, as a free time, that those are free times for you to go out and enjoy your time in the Haram and maximize your time um, in the Haram. So read your ebook, join the forum, read your ebook. <clears throat> Our plan and the most, if I were to tell you that you know, this program has some, uh, uh, some challenging times, <clears throat> uh, let me tell you what that means, challenging times. Our program will be staying in Medina for three nights and we have requested, it's not given to us, we have requested that when we depart Medina on August the 8th, which by the way is the 7th of Zulhijjah, according to the plan, lunar calendar. And by the way, that's one day before everybody has to go to Mina. So here you are on August the 7th in Ihram going to the Haram by bus. And that's a, a bus journey could be seven hours or eight hours. When you get there, you have to do Umrah. In other words, you get there, you check in into Azizia, then at a suitable time. And I would not recommend that anybody goes to the Haram at 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. or any time when there is regular congregational prayers because the Mataf would be absolutely totally full. You might be allowed in because you're wearing an ihram, but chances are you'll end up doing tawaf with difficulty on the first floor or the second floor and not necessarily in the courtyard of the mata. So our plan is to get you there after Isha, inshallah, depending on when we arrive. That's the, that's the part dependent on when the Saudi authorities allow the buses to start the travel after the passports have been checked and all the process that they follow. So we're going to come in, check in, go to the haram, you know, you'll be tempted to say, okay, I finished my Umrah and it's now one o'clock in the morning or two. You'll be tempted to say, well, let me stay till Fajr. I would strongly, very strongly urge you not to do that. You will have plenty of opportunity to pray in the Haram, inshallah, afterwards. What you need to worry about 
is that you're not tired in Mina and not tired in Arafat, especially Arafat. So conserve your energy as soon as you finish Umrah on the 7th of Dhul Hijjah, return back to Azizia. Get some rest because next morning you are going to go to Mina. Right? If you don't get rest, you stay up till Fajr and then you run back in and then you go into Mina. You know, by the time you get to Arafat, it, you're going to be exhausted. You're not going to be able to concentrate on the main reason you're going there, which is making dua in Arafat. So on the 7th, we'll come back to the building. Inshallah, that's the plan. And we're going to do the Umrah and we're going to rest. And then we will leave from the building to Mina late in the day. We'll have breakfast in Mina. You know, then you make your intention for Hajj if you're making Tamattu. And then we'll leave around 11 o'clock in the morning. So it'll give you some time in the morning to rest as well. <clears throat> and then further instruction will be provided and we'll complete the monastic accordingly. Read your ebook, please. It doesn't say that in the ebook as to when you depart, but I'm just letting you know that's the thought process to make it easy for you because that's a challenging time leaving on the 7th and having to be in Mina on the 8th and in between is an eight hour bus ride and an Umrah, which takes up some of your sleep and, and half the night. So the night before leaving Medina, get a good sleep. Just think out of the box. Just think out of the box as to when you, when you need to, to get rested. The next challenging time uh, that we have uh, or, or the plan that we have is that, you know, we will not go for Tawaf al ifada until the 11th of Zul Hijjah. You come back from Muzdalifah uh, on the 10th of Zul Hijjah, the day of Eid. Because two reasons for it. <clears throat> Number one is if I were to pick two days, one day, one night, if I were to pick those two days as to when it is physically stressful, physically it takes a toll on you, it is when you leave Arafat and travel to Muzdalifa. That evening, the lineup in the train station, taking the train, getting to Muzdalifa, sleeping under the open sky. It's nothing but blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But physically, you have to be strong to go through this. You have to be strong to go through this. That's why the Prophet Ali Islam did permit the weak and the sick to leave in the middle of the night from Muzdalifa. So you have to be strong, which also means that you should, you should get some rest. And then after you come to, 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 to uh, you know, spending the night in Muzdalifa and then you come in on, on the day of Eid, we would rather that you rest at night because we're not in any rush. Other programs that are leaving Mina on the 12th of Zul Hijjah and going to Medina uh, the next day, other programs are leaving Mecca altogether. Let them go through. That's the plan. Let them go through and do the Tawaf al -Ifada. The e-book says we will leave after dinner, inshallah, on the 11th of Zul Hijjah. So there is some ease there because of that difficulty um, as such. Um, Hajj is over on the 12th of Dhul Hijjah or extended to the 13th. This question gets inevitably asked. We are planning to be um, performing Hajj until the 13th of Dhul Hijjah. We're gonna be in Mina on the 13th of Dhul Hijjah. <clears throat> you will have access to the apartment, to the Azizi apartment. Although we will ask you that before you leave for Hajj, before I go out to Mina on the 8th of Zul Hijjah, 9th of August, I will ask you to pack your suitcase. Don't leave anything in the room. Pack your suitcase, lock it up, and leave your suitcase either inside the room or out in the hallway. Better leave it out in the hallway. Because Dar Islam as a service provider also looks at, at risk. There are risks associated with this trip, and we have contingency plans. We have evacuation plans, for example. And those buildings are one of those part of the plan. And that is to say, if we have to evacuate out of Mina, we'll bring those people into the buildings. We cannot have a room that has somebody's personal belongings still all over the place. Would rather that you actually have pack it up in your suitcase and leave it outside. If you are in Mina on the 10th or 11th or 12th of Zul Hijjah and want to pay a visit to come to the building, you can. That's not an issue per se, but we don't want you to keep your stuff scattered. More instruction uh, would be provided. The purpose of going through this in, in detail is so that you can get an understanding that this team that you're looking at today are part and parcel. We've had internal discussions, part and parcel, and there's a whole logistics behind it in getting down to that level of detail in our planning process based on our experience, just to make it easy, as easy as possible with 2 million people, 115 degrees, um, uh, 16 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, temperature, or 47 degrees Celsius for the Canadians, just so that it's, it's as easy as possible. That's a simple reason for it. When you come back after Hajj is over, back to Mina, you're going to go to your hotel on the 14th of Zul Hijjah to now finally 
get a room in front of the Haram in a hotel and stay there for a few nights. 14th of Zulhijjah is 15th of August. Hajj is over. You're back in Mina. You spent one night. So you're back in Azizia, spent one night. The same thing happens just like the checking in that you did in Medina. And that is that entire hotel is going to empty. Those who have had the room in the block prior to yours are leaving on the 14th. And the new ones are coming in. So we won't actually leave Azizia in the morning. There is no check-in time in the morning. We will leave after lunch. We'll leave closer to Asr time to get to the building. And even then, you know, Dar Islam workers have been working all day with the hotel staff. They'll, they'll, get, they'll get some room keys. If I need 100 rooms, I'll probably get 20 keys and others are coming because we're chasing housekeeping to get the room clean so we can get the key so we can accommodate you. But what we're trying to do for you is to get you out of Azizia so we can leave your belongings you can go to the Haram and pray Maghrib. You can go to the Haram and pray Isha. You can have dinner in the restaurant. In the meantime, the rooms will work out and we'll have to have you check in. So that's another time where you have to have patience. And after that, the five nights that you have in front of the Haram, uh, you know, you, you can have all the time that you want in terms of enjoying the Haram. That's the level of planning and the, the details that we've gone through to make sure that, uh, that, you, uh, that you're looked after. And in, in, in in, in this team is part of that. Uh, Please, it is important uh, for as far as medical advice is concerned that if you have any medical issues, if you have any, if you're hypertensive, if you're diabetic, if you have heart disease, please do consult with your physician before you leave. And please, whatever prescription medicine that you're taking with you, that you normally regularly take, take sufficient quantity with you to last the entire trip. And I also ask everyone to actually go get their antibiotics. At least one course of antibiotic, go to your physician, have him prescribe it. You're not sick, you're not gonna use the antibiotic, you don't need it now, but the difficulty is in getting the antibiotic in Saudi Arabia, which changed last year. Prior to that, I could walk into a pharmacy and ask for a Z-Pak or a moxicillin, and the pharmacist will give it to me without prescription. Starting last year, they want a prescription for a Saudi doctor and for you to get a prescription from a Saudi doctor, you have to go to a clinic, pay 300 reals for a doctor to see you and write a prescription so you can get it filled. It is better for you to tell your physician here, look, I'm going to Saudi Arabia and just in case I need antibiotic. Can you please write me a prescription? I will not take it unless I'm advised by a physician. And we will have physicians. We'll have physicians assigned to us, dedicated to program two, plus we'll have physicians available in a, in a medical tent in MENA to actually then give us the advice, okay, if you're not that well and you need to take, start your antibiotics, they will tell you that, only then you will, you will start. So take the antibiotic with you, take sufficient prescription with you that you normally take. And if you're one of those that wears eyeglasses without which you cannot see and cannot function, please do two things. Take a spare one. And number two, buy a string that holds your glass in place should it fall off your eyes. So it doesn't fall down and crack. The rest of the medical advice, what to do and prevent yourself and so forth, there is a specific webinar on July the 14th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It is, it is part of the webinar series. We have advertised it um, several times and you have to go to uh, the, the uh, uh, daraslam.com uh, Hajj webinars. You have to actually go there and actually um, uh, you know, register for that webinar. <clears throat> and I'm going to try and see if I can I can share that with you um, in a moment. And there it is. So that's the webinar that I'm referring to. Attend that webinar. We'll have our physicians go through and go and register there. It's online. And they'll go through and tell you what to prepare and how to prepare for this, uh, uh, for this trip. Remember, <clears throat> this is important because if you have health and if you pace yourself, if you're well rested, then it becomes easier for you to actually go through. The, 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 it's the quality that matters, not the quantity uh, uh, that matters. So that's, that's wanted to, to share that with you um, <clears throat> as such. Um, if you have not registered in the, in, in the Hajj forum, then again, I would ask you to register in the Hajj forum. I wanna share with you what the forum actually looks like. This is the live view of the forum. Um, you can see that I have altogether up until now 1,108 unique uh, email addresses. And yesterday I concluded 
the seminar in Dallas, I have 50 new, 50 new registrations. And we have, the forum is full of information. If you really want to know the fiqh of Hajj by Dr. Muhammad Salah, just go in there and you click it and you're going to be watching this video called uh, the fiqh of Hajj. So you can actually use the forum as a means to, uh, to, um, to uh, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to learn at your own time. There are many things in here. Um, you know, the Hajj seminar that was held in New Jersey, it's recording and the slide deck is, in, in, is an in-person seminar. You also have others from Dr. Uh, Dr. Slimi's book you're going to get. His, his video is here as well. So that's this one. And you saw, similarly, if you go in back and look at, uh, you know, um, for uh, the, the, the information, the logistics questions that people tend to ask, you know, uh, how would my password be managed? Do I need a sleeping bag? Where's the barber service? It's all there. I mean, we've been answering it. And, 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 and the good thing is, oh, I have 64 users now waiting. Good thing is that there's 156 different topics and 498 different postings. And you can participate by asking your questions. But before you go and start posting questions everywhere, I want you to go read this, how to use the Dar Islam forum. It tells you the format of the forum itself. So you know exactly where to post your uh, question so that it's, it's easier to navigate uh, for others. Brothers and sisters, if you're new, if you have not joined the forum at all, um, where you go to join the forum is, is this is the actual address, dsthaj2019.freeforums.net. And when you go register, it'll ask you to provide an email address. The email address that I recognize when I approve, your registration goes into pending status, is the one you provided to Dar Islam at the time you booked your package. If you want to provide a different email address, then at the time of registering, there's a comment box, tell us about yourself, your name, your program, your Hajj ID, because it goes into pending status. I look it up into our record to know that it is you who's going with Dar Islam because it's not open to the general public. It's not open to anybody else going for Hajj with another company. It's just for Dar Islam. So it's important that you provide me the right email address or write who you are in the, in the, um, in the comment box. And so I strongly urge you to join, uh, join the forum. Um, we are also looking at uh, the next meeting, um, but we have the opportunity, hopefully between now and then, you'll have ample opportunity for, uh, uh, for questions and answers, and hopefully you'll be much, much more prepared as it gets closer. I believe Brother Heather and I were talking about uh, changing the meeting from July the 13th to July the 20th. <clears throat> um, and the reason being, that um, I, I actually do all the in-person seminars for Dar Islam. I'm, I was in Dallas yesterday, I'm in Houston today. This is my sixth seminar. So there's a travel for me every weekend. And, and now I'm scheduled for uh, travel to the UK, which was not previously scheduled when we had the webinar for program two scheduled for July 13th. And now I'm, I'm scheduled to go there and deliver a seminar in person in London uh, on the four, on 13th and, and in Birmingham on the 14th. And Sheikh Jamal, I haven't forgotten you. I know that I, I have to do a, uh, a, a remote session uh, for you uh, for uh, Alaman Center. So once I'm done with the London seminar, I'll join remotely from there to do that. So we cannot do um, a 13th um, uh, program two. We'll reschedule to the 20th, inshallah, if it's okay with everybody. And we'll send you the meeting notice accordingly. And that will be the last of the webinar with all of the program two Hujjaj are invited prior to us departing. So uh, you'll have plenty of time uh, to go through it. Uh, Brother Haider, I think I'm gonna end here. It's an honor, it's a privilege for people like us, those who have met, those who have said to you of our team that they've been going for a number of years, each one of us are humbled by this experience. Each one of us understand that number one, that we are given this opportunity, it's not given to everybody. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also gives you the ability to serve. It's an honor bestowed upon us that we honor your worship by serving you in this sacred journey. We have not forgotten the commitment that we have. We feel the weight on our shoulders and we know that serving you is our purpose with sincerity and that it is perhaps this act itself that will cause Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us. So it's an honor on behalf of the entire team to actually to serve you and to do the best that we can. Again, we're all sincere. If you come across any difficulty, don't point the fingers because I'm telling you if we have issues, 
we try to mitigate that because every one of them is working with a clean heart. That Islam will not take shortcut, does not want to take shortcut. When do come across issues, we'll try to mitigate that. So work with us, trust us, and we'll try our best to make sure that this is a very spiritually uplifting journey for you. This is a transformational journey for you. So when you come back, you are a different person. Not only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you your record book, which has nothing in it because everything is gone, but it's also changed your mindset, your perspective, and brought you closer to him so that you long to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel very different this, when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you make salah or when you make dua. And this is the transformation that happens. But brothers and sisters, what I started off with, I'll remind you again, because of the experience we all have, and that is you can make this a transformational journey and you can make this transformational journey because what <clears throat> you gain out of it is what you take in your heart. What you gain out of it is what you take in your heart. So make sure that you are prepared for it and you allow yourself to be transformed and improve that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we're all here to serve you. And uh, Brother Haider, and um, Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu uh, alaikum rahmatullah. I think we're going to now open up for Q&A. If he has any questions, uh, we won't take verbal, verbal questions. It's difficult, but there's a Q&A folder on your webinar. You can write your questions and we'll do our best to answer it, inshallah. Jazakallah uh, khair. Brother Azhar, beautiful. Very nice uh, information. Uh, we have so far uh, two questions. Do uh, you think you can help answer some of them? Let me put it in sequence. Uh, Sheikh Jamal, are you on the line? I don't think so. I think he's off. You know, Sheikh Abdurrahman, somebody sent a chat question. And I think it's, it's in the chat normally, you know, and it was sent to all the panelists. I heard that when I see yeah. the Kaaba, I can only make one specific dua. Is that true or can I make more than one? Number one. Number two, can I do tawaf on behalf of others okay. once I finish my own? Father, mother, children, siblings. When you answer the last question about tawaf on your own, it'd be nice if you can cover the different schools of thoughts if possible. And I would like you, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, to answer this question, please. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Um, whenever you see the Kaaba, uh, a dua, whatever you do that you make is accepted and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it yet you should make uh, there's a very general dua to uh, to praise the Kaaba and to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who uh, ordered our great grandfather Ibrahim alayhi salam to build the Kaaba uh, but to make dua it is a sunnah and it's recommended to make as many dua that you can one, two, ten, fifteen, as much as you can, as long as you are not disturbing other people. So whenever you enter, especially for the first time, when you end up the pathway, and you are in a place where you are comfortable and you're not disturbing others, and you make dua as much as you can, uh, one minute, two minutes, to five minutes, as much as you can, and you are comfortable with. Uh, but yes. You, you can make more than one dua. As for the second part, uh, making tawaf on behalf of another person once you have made, finished your own. Yes, it is permissible and you can make tawaf on behalf of your father, mother, anyone that you want to make tawaf on their behalf. And uh, as the Prophet wasallam said about doing hajj, that you can uh, make hajj on behalf of your mother. So tawaf is also part of hajj and also an act of worship. And what are you doing is that you are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. You're not doing it for the person. You're not doing it for the person. You are doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you intend that, oh Allah, you are qadir ala kulli shay. You have power over everything. Oh Allah, you send the reward to so and so. If they have not been to uh, a hajj or umrah or they've never been to Mecca and Medina to make uh, one tawaf on their behalf on an individual basis uh, for your mom, for your mother, for someone respected in your, uh, in your family member. Uh, so that's something that if you have time and you're doing more tawaf, it's good to do that. Barakallah. Um, this next question is a logistics question. Uh, do the connecting flights between U.S. cities allows to check in Zamzam water in baggage. 
um, um, I would say to you that the liquids generally is carried in a very different part of the aircraft that if they find your Zamzam water inside your baggage, if that's what your question meant, then they may actually remove it uh, aside. But if you're meaning to say that, can you take Zamzam water as a check baggage, domestic flights will allow you to carry it, but they may charge you for it. Zamzam water is free of charge, even if it's the third piece of luggage from Saudi Arabia to the US. If you're taking Turkish Airlines or Tehad or Emirates or Saudi Airlines, uh, it's a flight transiting um, to, through its hub, but you've checked your luggage in Jeddah or Medina all the way back to New York or, or any US international gateway, that is free of charge. Then when you come out of customs in US and then decide to go through a domestic flight, yes, they will take in Zamzam, no, no issues, but it'll be a check baggage and you may have to pay for that check baggage. Um, second question was, um, uh, do we need to do a separate qurbani for Eid here in US or is it covered with Hajj qurbani? This question was recently asked uh, in the forum and I posted it and Dr. Muhammad Salah basically said that the Eid qurbani for the one who is doing for Hajj, the Hajj qurbani suffices as his Eid qurbani. You don't have to do two separate qurbanis. If you're going for Hajj, Hajj qurbani suffices as the Eid qurbani. You don't have to do a separate one. Of course, if you wish to do a second one or separate one, then call it sadaqa. You will get reward for it. And that's how he answered it and it's posted uh, in the forum. Um, um, who else do I have? Uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Hassan Ansari, if you can ask, answer this question, please, for me. Is it sunnah to do tawaf al ifada on the day after Eid? Is it sunnah to do tawaf al ifada on the day after Eid? I guess the question might be based on the fact that we're not going on the 10th of Zul Hijjah. We might be going on the 11th of Zul Hijjah to make tawaf al ifada. So is it sunnah to do that? If you could answer that question, uh, it will be appreciated, Sheikh Hassan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, regarding this question, is it sunnah to do tawaf al ifada uh, after Eid or after the day of Eid? Uh, to be honest, yani, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he performed tawaf al ifada on the day of Eid. That's number one. But number two, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well, and when you look at the principles of hajj, uh, what we see is that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed that uh, having ease during hajj is a principle of hajj. So anytime someone asks a question, for example, in the famous hadith, uh, different questions were asked, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept on replying, uh, la haraj, la haraj, there's no harm, there's no harm, right? Mm -hmm. So when we take this into consideration, then what would be the, actually the sunnah is that we go at a time where it's easy for us uh, to perform the tawaf al ifadah, right? And of course, Darus Salaam, I've been working with them, alhamdulillah, for many years. We always look at a time where it's more appropriate, less busy, less traffic, less people on the tawaf. So inshallah, there's no harm doing it the day of Eid, the day after Eid. And of course, considering your health, considering the fact we're going as a group, it's best inshallah we follow what the uh, Dar salam has uh, scheduled for us. Jazakallah khair. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh Hassan. Uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, you will also tell me that there is a limit as to up to when tawaf al ifadah must be done, especially according to the Hanifi Madhab? Yes, in the Hanafi Madhab, uh, is my thing mute here. Um, is the first, second, and third. So the 10th, 11th, and 12th, you can do tawaf al ifadah And for the sisters, if they're not able to, they can even prolong it even after that, whenever they're able to, whether it's the, uh, the 14th or the 15th or goes beyond that, whenever they're able to. Or someone who is sick is not able to, they're also excused and they can delay it after the, uh, the 12th of the hijjah Sir Sheikh Abdul Rahman, can you tell me that according to the uh, uh, the other madhaib, it's okay to go beyond the twelve? Yes, I, I'm not. Uh, uh, I don't have the, the, all the details. Uh, which madhaib that prefers? Uh, their Shafi. limit. But uh, the Shafi, they go beyond the, the okay. beyond the until the thirteenth. So, so the gentleman who answered asked this question, you know, you have plenty of opportunity in Medina to ask the shields that you have over there and then make the decision accordingly. You've got the views enough in this webinar for now, inshallah. Um, um, can you make tawaf for non-Muslim parents? Um, uh, Imam Ahmed, Hamad, can you please answer that question, please? 
the question was, if I understand it, can I make tawaf on the behalf of my non-Muslim as a Christian or a Jews? Are you any Muslim? Uh, really, uh, if they are still alive and they are not Muslim, I can around the Kaaba make a dua and make tawaf to say, Ya Allah, guide them to the Islam. If they pass away, I consider the same thing with the situation of the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, especially in Surah Tawbah, many detail about it. And if any other Imams have any other opinion, please let them, I mean, comment about my opinion. During their life, I make tawaf on their behalf. I make a dua, Ya Allah, guide them to the Islam. If they pass away, I leave it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah knows the best. Can, can I have some clarification on this? Are you making tawaf on their behalf or are you making tawaf for yourself and making dua for them? Exactly what our previous imam said. All the hajj process, not on my behalf or their behalf, for the sake of Allah, but the dua on their behalf and may Allah guide them. As Rasulullah Sallallahu make a dua on behalf of Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Jahl, uh, Ibn Hisham, when both of them, they were kafris, Allahumma, أعز الإسلام بأحب هذا الرجلين إليك roughly meaning يا الله support this religion by the one you love more than the other and سبحان الله the dua of Rasulullah was accepted on behalf of عمر الخطاب عمر الخطاب declared the shahad the this is the dua but tawaf is an act of worship I as I said I make the tawaf on for the sake of Allah on my behalf if I like to make that dua during the tawaf Inshallah, I will do it. And if any other imam have other opinion, let them give it to me and may Allah reward them. So, so let me to clarify the answer. You do tawaf for yourself, but you can make dua for them and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them to Islam. Yes. Okay. Barakallah fikum. I just wanted to clarify what? that. Barakallah may Allah reward you. Thank you. Um, same question. Can you make dua for non-Muslims? I think that question has been answered. Um, shall I buy travel insurance? How it can help me? Buying travel insurance is a personal choice you make, and that simply protects you. For example, I don't know what your health condition is, but should you have to cancel your trip at the last minute, at this time, all the monies that you've paid to Dar Islam is non-refundable because we've already sent it out. We cannot cancel the hotels. We cannot cancel the tickets. So you won't get that back. But if you protect yourself, then you'll buy the travel insurance so that should you not be able to go, then you can get some of that back. So this is something a personal uh, and you need to find out which travel insurance company offers it and what kind of coverage and then make that decision. And that's how it can be of help to you. Um, did Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put on ihram at Dhul Hudayfa even when he was traveling from Medina? Okay, um, this is becoming a, a fiqh, uh, a webinar, let's say now. Um, it, the, the, it's, the, the Prophet put on ihram at Dhul Hudayfa even when he was traveling from Medina, if it is specific to traveling for Hajj, where exactly did he put his ihram on? Um, the answer is yes. He put the ihram in Dhul Khalifa. Let's, let's, let's keep it simple. Are we making the niyyah for Hajj Tamattu? Um, again, you'll have plenty of opportunity with the shiuks in Medina that you're there to find out. I'll tell you that the vast <laughs> majority of the people make Hajj Tamattu even though they have barely hours between the end of Umrah and again putting on Ihram for Hajj. As I mentioned on the 7th of Zul Hijjah, by the time you come back from the Haram, it'll be one o'clock or two o'clock. And then around 10 o'clock in the morning, you're putting on Ihram again. And so if you want to make Hajj Quran, you can do so. Vast majority do Hajj Tamatto. If you want to clarify how you can make Hajj Quran, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have the animal with you, you can ask all those questions uh, with the Shiuks. Uh, either you can place that question in the forum or you can ask them when you see them in Medina, you'll have a few days before you can decide what type of Hajj you would like to perform. Um, can I do more Umrahs for my parents in the last five days before departing home other than the first one that we do for Manasik? Uh, so I'm in program two, I have finished my Hajj. Now I'm staying in the hotel in front of the Haram and I have five days left to do. Can I make additional Umrahs on behalf of my parents. And can you also clarify when you answer this question, and that clarification is, do you make Umrah for more than one person per Umrah, or does it have to be just one Umrah per person? Um, Sheikh Abdurrahman, please. 
Um, the uh, first of all, I want to say that when you are there in Mecca after your Hajj and you have a few days and you want to do more Umrahs, um, try to minimize your Umrah plan for the fact that uh, with experience and mashallah, all of our leaders will, will also uh, uh, maybe shed more light on that. That it is very difficult. It's very time consuming. Uh, the preparation for going to Masjid Aisha, to putting on your haram, coming back, doing your tawaf, sa'i, and then shaving, and then you are tired and you have to have a good sleep after that. So that consumes a lot of energy and time. So if you want to do Umrah, that's okay and you can do it. Um, but try to, instead of doing a whole Umrah, you're doing the main part of Umrah, which is Tawaf. And the best act of worship during your stay in Mecca is to do Tawaf because this act of worship, you cannot do it anywhere else in the world. That's your only five days that you will have the opportunity to do that specific act of worship that is very specific to that place. So instead of doing Umrahs, if you do, would do Tawaf, inshallah, Niyatul Mu'mini Khayru Min Amali, as the Prophet ﷺ says, that your intention of good deed is better than the action. So at times, your intention of Umrah, inshallah, you will get the reward of that and you would do just tawaf. Um, now, to your question specifically, um, doing Umrah, uh, some of the scholars say that you should only do it for one person. One person, uh, uh, Umrah per person. So if you're doing a Umrah, you do it for your father only or for your mother only and, and so on and so forth. Some of the scholars say that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity, uh, Allah will accept your act of worship and you can do it for multiple people. That's also an accepted view. Um, so you can choose uh, whichever you want. It's best to do it one per person. Yeah. Um, but here's, let me summarize this. So there is nothing that stops you as far as permissibility is concerned yes. in making extra umrahs other than the yes. logistics and the tiredness. So yes. if you want to do umrah for your parents, you can. Yes. But of course you can do tawaf anytime yes. and you can do multiple times during the day and it's not as physically strenuous. You don't have to go to hill and, and, and come back uh, as such. But you can do the umrah. Yes. Majority view is one per. Yes. Majority view is one per. There's a small view that says you can have more than one per. <coughs> and I think that explanation is, is, is sufficient. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallahu khair. I think this person is asking the question, is it sunnah? Do you suggest we perform on our own to perform tawaf and ifadah on the 10th of Zul Hijjah? Um, there are many things I can tell you. Like, uh, you know, while the Prophet Ali Salatu Islam performed it in a certain sequence and he went out on the 10th of Zul Hijjah, not everybody that was accompanying him did. So you want to try it out, you can, but the plan for the group is very simple. We are going to leave according to the ebook after dinner on the 11th. I've been managing program two. Uh, most of the team that's here has managed program two uh, in the past few years. We find that the rush happens on the 10th and the 11th and it becomes really crazy trying to get back to Mina at the end of the day on the 10th. The traffic goes nowhere. Uh, you're already exhausted. But we find that if you go, in the evening on the 11th, it's much easier to perform it. You have far more uh, if you will, um, uh, concentration and far more uh, 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 spiritual connection to do that. So the plan is to actually do it after uh, 11 p.m. or after dinner on the 11th. But if you think you want to go on your own, you can. That is some not provide any logistics for it. But we will advise you. I will advise you. <clears throat> That's the end of the question, uh, Brother uh, Haider. Yes, yes uh, uh, actually, I, 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 there, is, there is one that I mentioned if the person can bring a passport to the Masjid of Hajj. I think we need to clarify that. So the question is, do you recommend we take the passport with us during Manasik of uh, Hajj? Uh, you know what this question tells me? This question tells me that you have not watched any of my seminars or didn't attend any of them. That's what it tells me. Because you don't have your passport. Once you land, the authorities take away your passport. Dar Islam tracks it, working with them as to where they've kept it. You don't have your passport with you. Um, so passport is not the issue. The, the, the valuables that you have with you, extra credit cards, extra cash, extra checks, jewelry you bought, 
Yes, Dar es Salaam does provide a service on the 7th of Zul Hijjah before you go on to the monastic of Hajj. They will offer a valuable safekeeping service. More information will be provided to you by the group leader. We'll take that as a deposit, have you sign for it, and you can take that back once the monastic is over. But you don't have your passports with you. Okay. Do we have this last one here? I don't know if you want to answer that quickly. <clears throat> Do you supply ihram clothes for men, including the one with no... I'm not sure. No, I'm talking about the, on, on the Q&A. On the Q&A. Okay, the, the, the question goes to Sheikh Abdul Rahman because he answered the last one about the tawaf. The question is a follow-up, <clears throat> and that is, um, in relation to your last answer, um, about recommendation tawaf instead of umrah. How many times can we do tawaf? Is it regular seven times or can it be just one time? Uh, let me see. You have to unmute. Are you unmute? No. Okay, very good question. Um, tawaf is going around the Kaaba seven times. Tawaf is not just going around one time. That's called a shout. That's one time going around the Kaaba. Tawaf is the a combination of seven rounds around the, around the Kaaba. So whenever you start a, a tawaf, you will complete seven rounds around the Kaaba and finishing with the eighth istilam to the Hajar Aswad. So that will complete one tawaf. So whenever you start, if for any reason for the salah or going away or taking a break, uh, if you have to stop in between, you will continue once, uh, once you're done and you will complete the seven tawafs and you pray two rakat after that. The last question I'll answer, you know, and that is to, to do with the, can we put on a haram ad miqad or we have to put it in Medina? Um, I take that question very differently. Um, you know, there is a wearing of the haram garment versus the making the intention to enter into a haram. So when we depart from Medina, men will sit in the buses with the haram garment on. All the physical prep for a haram happens in your hotel room. The clipping of the nails and the shaving of the unwanted hair and the and the ghusl all happens in the room. You get on that bus with the ihram garment and all you do at the miqat is perform the turaka and make the intention. Okay, so wearing the garment at the miqat is not advisable. Some people want to say go to the miqat and put on the garment. You know, we have a, an already a seven hours uh, a trip. Just imagine if everybody wants to go to the miqat and take a shower, we'll be there forever in terms of getting out of the miqat. We just don't want to do that. It's perfectly okay to do the physical prep. Miqat is just barely 30 minutes, just outside the boundary of the city of Medina. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullahu khair. Badr Haider. Yes. Jazakumullahu uh, khair. Inshallah, uh, we are about, uh, about about 50 minutes extra of the timing that we have. Uh, before we end, inshallah, uh, we want to thank you <clears throat> for your time joining and participating with our first webinar. Hopefully, inshallah, it was uh, helpful and, uh, and answer some of your questions. Our next one, next one, inshallah, instead of Sunday, July 13th, originally scheduled, we will move on into, inshallah, to uh, Saturday, July 20th, uh, starting at the same time at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will, inshallah, send you a reminder with the detail of the agenda. Uh, our humble request, please continue reviewing your program information and prepare yourself accordingly. Uh, please also don't hesitate to contact any one of us anytime uh, at your convenience with any question or concern you might have. Uh, may Allah inshallah accept our intentions, make it easy for all of us. Uh, uh, inshallah, we can close with the dua from uh, Shaykh Ihsan. Shaykh Ihsan, you can start. Uh, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our hajj. Allahumma taqabbal hajjana wa ja'alhu hajjan mabrooran wa sa'iyan mashkooran wa tijaratan min tabur. We ask Allah, O oh Allah, that you allow this Hajj to be acceptable and as well make it sincere, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and make it easy and safe and let us go in safety and come back in safety. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Jazakallah khayyam, barakallahu feekum, jamiyan. Wa alaikum salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, barakallahu feekum. This ends the, uh, the webinar. Assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.